Welcome back to the next installment of the Inside EV's 70 mile an hour highway range test. We've got one of the most compelling new electric vehicles to hit the market here today, the Rivian R1T. Now the R1T was the first all electric pickup truck to hit the market here in North America. The Ford F-150 Lightning is gonna be launching really soon, but the R1T beat them to market. Now this vehicle has what Rivian calls the large battery pack. It's 135 kilowatt hour, that's the total capacity. Rivian never really announced what the usable capacity is, but we believe it to be somewhere between 125 and 128 kilowatt hour. It's EPA range rated at 314 miles per charge, but that's with the 21 inch road wheels. This vehicle here has the 20 inch off-road wheels, which don't have a separate EPA rating. However, Rivian tells us on their website that when you add the 20 inch off-road wheels as an option, you should figure on getting about 40 miles less range. So that would bring us somewhere around 265, 275 today with this highway range test. But I want you to know that I did close the tonneau cover in the back of the bed here. The tonneau cover used to be standard equipment, but when Rivian just restructured their pricing, it's an option and an expensive one at that. If you get the manual version of it, it's $1,800. And if you get the power cover like we have on this loaner here, it's $3,000. So it's not cheap, but it really is a cool feature. All right, let's get in the truck now. We'll go over some of the ground rules for these 70 mile an hour highway range tests. All right, so we're all charged up and ready to go. The R1T is telling me it's got 293 miles of range. I'll take that any day. That's actually the highway EPA range rating, 293 miles. I mentioned earlier that the EPA range rating is 314 miles per charge. That's the combined rating. The highway rating, which is really more appropriate for today's range test, is 293 miles. And that's exactly what the R1T is telling us it has in it today. And this is a brand new R1T. It had 400 miles when they dropped it off to me. So it's a fresh pack. There hasn't been any degradation. I think we're in good shape here today. I uh, reset the trip meters to make sure that we're at zero. I also put the vehicle in conserve driving mode. That's the most efficient driving mode and lowered the uh, suspension down to the lowest setting. We also set the climate control to 68 degrees as we always do in these range tests. I set it between 68 and 70 degrees depending on you know what I need for that day somewhere in that either 68, 69, or 70 degrees today. I have it set at 68 and at band setting one, I turned off the climate control for the rear seats and also for the passenger seat because there's no one over there. So I'm just really uh, controlling the climate right where I'm sitting here. That's the most efficient way to do it. Okay, let's head on to the highway and see how well she does. All right, so we're out on the highway cruising along at 70 miles an hour. And actually 70 miles an hour reads 73 miles an hour in the R1T. It may be because we have the 20 inch off-road wheels and the car was calibrated for the 21 inch road wheels. Uh, they should have a very similar overall diameter, but could be off by a little bit enough to make the speedometer three miles an hour off. But we check it with uh, a couple of different apps. I have a couple different GPS apps to check the speedometer and both of them said the same thing that that uh, 70 miles an hour stated on the car we were only going about 66 and a half miles an hour so i had to bump it up to 73 and that locked us right in at 70 miles an hour now there's something else i need to point out it's starting to drizzle here today and uh, i only have the r1t for a short four day loan and it poured the last two days. So today's day three of the four day loan and I have to get the range test done before it goes back to Rivian. Today looked like it was gonna be the best day. It wasn't supposed to rain, but it's starting to drizzle here. So we'll keep an eye on that as the rain te test go as the rain test goes on, as the range test goes on and see if it gets worse or if it stops. It's a very light drizzle at this point, but it's enough to note that, you know, it's not uh, perfect weather conditions. We like to make sure everybody knows the weather conditions we're driving in. The temperature right now is 48 degrees 
and we have a slight drizzle. Uh, as far as uh, wind, we check our wind apps. There's a six mile an hour wind coming from the west. That's not too bad. We'll monitor that for the rest of the trip. And as we always do, we're out here driving in long loops. I'm on the New Jersey Turnpike today. I'll drive in a loop that's about 80 miles long up and down the turnpike. And we do that to help offset the wind and also any elevation change. Also, although the, the New Jersey Turnpike's relatively flat, we don't gain mu too much elevation, but we always like to try to start and end the range tests at the same location or very close to the same location. Sometimes I go to another charging station uh, that's like five or, or 10 miles away from the one that I started at, depending on how far the vehicle can go. That last uh, 20 or 30 miles of the range test, I'm always calculating, okay, which charging station am I gonna end up at? Which one can I uh, pull up at with the battery fully depleted? Uh, so uh, we'll be doing that the same uh, way this time. I have it plotted out so that we'll end up in Bridgewater, New Jersey at the Electrify America DC fast charger. But uh, if, uh, if the car gives me more or less than what we're expecting, we might pull up to another station that's relatively close to there. All right, checking in at 75% state of charge. We are 25% of the way through the range test and we've covered 65 miles little bit less than what I was hoping to do in that first leg. Uh, that would, uh, I guess, come out to 260 miles if we're to, to repeat that for each of the three final quarters of this uh, range test. I was really expecting to get north of 280, 285 today. A friend of mine, Kyle Connor, recently did a 70 mile an hour highway range test on an R1T, similarly spec to this one, same wheel and tire combination. And he ended up going 293 miles, which is exactly the EPA highway range rating for the R1T. So I was really expecting to get close to that. Now, I don't think the fact that it's been drizzling on and off today really has much of an effect because it's a very light drizzle. Uh, I think it's more of the wind. The wind is now up to about 12 miles an hour, and that's significant enough to really affect your range, especially in a big boxy vehicle like a pickup truck, uh, perhaps a, a, a sleek, slippery sedan might not be as affected by the wind as the R1T is with its big, you know, boxy frame. So I think we have to keep an eye on the wind app today and see if that changes. I have been heading south for the first part of this range test. I'm going to be turning around soon and heading north. That might change things. The wind might uh, be at my back at that point. Uh, we'll see. Uh, we'll check in at 50% and see where we're at. All right, we're at 50% state of charge. We are halfway home and we have gone 130 miles. So yeah, the R1T went another 65 miles, the same amount of miles it did in the first quarter. And that doesn't happen too often. Usually all four quarters have different miles, even if it's off by just a mile or two. We'll see how consistent it is, but so far it's been the model of consistency. Consumption's just a little bit better than it was for the first leg. We're at uh, 2.07 mile per kilowatt hour. And one thing I noticed is, uh, one thing that I like that the R1T shows you in the trip meter is how many kilowatt hour you've used in that trip. And it's showing here that we have used 63 kilowatt hour. So at 50%, that puts us at 126 kilowatt hour total usable. And when we started this video, I think I said that we believe the usable capacity is somewhere between 125 and 128. So it puts us right into that wheelhouse. Rivian only really announced the total pack capacity, which was 135, and the rest is going to be held for a buffer. So I'm pretty confident now, even more than ever, that our estimate of somewhere between 125 and 128 is probably the usable capacity. But we'll see what that number looks like once I've drained this thing down to zero. We'll check back in at 25% uh, state of charge and see where we're at. Checking in at the 25% state of charge point, we have gone three quarters of the range test here today, and we are at 190 miles driven. So we did a little worse than we did in the first two quarters. We only drove 60 miles in that quarter, but I think I know why. The wind has picked up now, and this leg of the trip, 
I was facing a headwind of about 14 to 15 miles an hour. So that's a significant headwind and enough to knock at least five miles off of that, uh, that quarter of the, the trip. So, you know, it's really becoming clear here today that the weather has played a role here. Not so much the fact that it was drizzling very early on, because that stopped early on and it hasn't rained or drizzled since. But the wind has been pretty significant all day today. And it started out, it was at like five, six miles an hour, but as soon as we started heading south on the turnpike, it just gradually picked up and picked up and picked up. And now, you know, we're at 15, 16 miles an hour. Uh, the good news is on this leg now, uh, I have a bit of a tailwind because the last 50 or 60 miles I was driving with a headwind. So we'll probably do better in this final quarter of the range test. Uh, the consumption rate is also down. We're at, we're averaging two miles per kilowatt hour now, which is the worst that we've seen during this whole trip. And it's because that last leg was really, we were driving right into the wind. So that's uh, something to take into consideration. It's good to do these range tests in all types of weather and, uh, you know, wind conditions. It gives people a little bit of an idea of what they can expect because we don't drive in a vacuum. Everybody drives in different weather. It's hot, it's cold, it's windy, it's calm. Uh, so this is going to give everybody a little bit of an idea what it's going to be like if you're driving in windy conditions and it's in the mid to upper 40 degree Fahrenheit temperatures. I think we're going to end up somewhere around 250 to 260, somewhere there. Uh, I know this truck's got more in it than that. And if the weather conditions were better and if we had the 21 inch road tires, I think we could push 300 miles with this uh, for sure. But to not today, it's not happening today. And uh, we've got the 20 inch off road tires. We've got windy conditions. It's cold. All of that's conspiring to probably rob the R1T of 30 or 40 miles of, of range under, you know, if you wanted to compare it to ideal conditions. Next up, we're going to check in when we are at the Electrify America DC Fast Charge Station and the state of charge reads zero. All right, well, that's a wrap. We made it to the Electrify America DC Fast Charging Station. Didn't run out. And we drained everything out of this pack. I don't think it has another half a mile left in it. I even drove another two miles after the range indicator said zero and we squeezed everything we could out of this. We actually used 125 kilowatt hour. And the final results are 253.7 miles with a consumption rating of 2.03 mile per kilowatt hour. Not as good as I was hoping, but this is a very windy day today and wind affects vehicles, especially big boxy vehicles like a pickup truck. I'm sure if this was perfect conditions, we would have went another 25 or 30 miles. I'm pretty certain of it. I'm going to try to grab one of these in the middle of the summer when it's 75, 80 degrees and repeat this same exact test. I'll see if Rivian uh, has any vehicles available to loan me one. And if they do, we'll definitely do that. Or maybe even I'll get someone that owns one here in New Jersey. All right. Well, thanks for watching. And if you like what we're doing here on Inside EVs, please click that subscribe button and follow us on social media so you don't miss any upcoming electric vehicle news, range tests, charging, all that good stuff. And thanks for watching.